and Tony Pep in a 10 round junior lightweight bout. Hello again everyone, Bob Papa back in Atlantic City. Floyd Mayweather Jr., 21 years of age. He's 16 and 0 with 13 knockouts. He's a 1996 Olympic bronze medalist. He's coming off a 10 round decision, 56 days ago, the longest layoff of his career. Dave Bontempo takes a closer look at Floyd Jr. Floyd Mayweather talks the talk and walks the walk. This exciting junior lightweight has triumphed by various routes in his young pro career. One constant is hand speed. The unknown variable is how Mayweather will use his explosive quickness. In the spirit of promising punchers, he goes to the body, often. Mayweather cleared a major hurdle in his last outing. He was up against a durable opponent who took him 10 rounds for the first time. It was a big step in the learning process. I showed the world that, um, you know, Floyd Mayweather can also box and move on his legs instead of just always stalking a guy. I learned you can't knock everybody out. I mean, you got 10 and 4 rounds, you should take your time, just relax, and um, go out there and do what you got to do. And that's to win. Tony Pep brings good credentials into the contest. This native of Canada believes his experience will surprise his American foe. He expects to score an upset. Pep believes somebody looked past him. I feel really good about this fight right here, and uh, I think that they made a mistake at top rank. Um, this is this is a United States production. He's a U.S. fighter. He's a U.S. medalist, and uh, you know I think they were looking for someone to test this young man, and they've certainly got that, but I think it's gonna be a little more of a test than what they wanted. He never found nobody like the Floyd Mayweather. So it's gonna be something different for him. It's gonna be something different for me, for me too to fight somebody so tall, but it's, it's really no problem for me. You know what gives a boxer's problems is a bo another boxer. And what gives a puncher problems is a boxer. You know, so I'm going to go in there and use my obvious height and reach advantage, and uh, I may end up turning into the puncher in the end. I know he's he's tall, and um, he used the jab a lot, but um, I plan on going there and bobbing and weaving and um, taking my time and taking his jab away from him and um, cutting him down slow. Well, Tony Pep and Floyd Mayweather Jr. getting set for tonight's main event. I'll ask you first about Pep, Dave Bontempo. 331 rounds as a pro. He's been in there against some world champions. Only knocked out once back in 1988 against Tony the Tiger Lopez. He brings a lot of veteran savvy into this fight, doesn't he? And, Bob, he said, I'm going to take Floyd Mayweather into deep water and drown him. He said, I'm going to take him places he's never been before by showing an adjustment, the ability to do different things in the ring. By far, he's got the most experience of anybody Floyd Mayweather has come up against. Now, Floyd Mayweather Jr., on the other hand, is a young man who's coming off a 10-round decision, the longest he had ever gone in his pro career, the only time he's been past six rounds. This bout is scheduled for 10. We heard him say in the piece that he realizes he can't knock people out all the time, but he's a young man that has a lot of confidence and he has a lot of experience in his corner. You certainly have to go. Roger Mayweather, people in his family, it's just a fighting family. His father is in the corner with him many times. This is a guy who, when he lands a punch on the chin to Tony Pep tonight, we're going to find out a lot about both guys. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, because Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a man that is thinking about a world championship somewhere down the road. What type of preparation is this for him? Bob, this is excellent. This is a guy whose style will be reminiscent of Gennaro Hernandez, who they're trying to put Mayweather in against sometime soon. This may be the test to see how he does against that style with the guy who's got the poise. This is maybe the warm-up for a title bout with Hernandez. Well, both men are warming up in their respective dressing rooms. They're making their way to the ring. We'll have tonight's main event, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Tony Pep after this timeout on ESPN2 wins that man tony pep coming off a 240 day layoff last fought on october the 16th in edmonton an eight round win against craig thomas would love to get a win against the up-and-coming star in the junior lightweight division floyd mayweather jr and we are still awaiting floyd's arrival into the ring area he has been in against louis espinoza had a win against him he's lost to tony lopez he's lost to regilio tour he has 45 professional bouts, 331 rounds. He's been past nine rounds 16 times 
Dave, that has to work in his favor. Especially if this fight goes into the later stages, a big edge for him. He's also got the layoff since October coming in to balance that. So Tony Pepp also has the height and reach as you take a look at Floyd Mayweather on his way in. And this is an excellent chance to look at how Mayweather will do against a veteran with this style. Mayweather coming off a 10-round decision against Gustavo Cueto on April the 18th, the longest he's ever been. He's 4-0 here in 1998. 1997, he was 10-0 with nine knockouts. In the Olympics, he lost a controversial decision to Serafim Todorov, 12-11. Both Al Bernstein and I, who were in Atlanta, uh, felt that Floyd Mayweather was the best United States boxer. He did come away with a bronze, but really could have had a gold medal. Yes, and he had the, the hand speed. He showed a lot of pro styles back then, and it's coming true to form now. He was the first American to beat a Cuban in Olympic competition in 20 years. Now for the introduction, here's Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Xanadu Room at the Trump Taj Mahal Casino and Resort in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Top Rank Incorporated and matchmaker Ron Katz in association with Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, this Bud's for you, presents the Deuce main event of the evening, 10 rounds, junior lightweights. Your referee for this event, once again, is Earl Brown. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my right, wearing the red trunks, black trim, white accessories. He weighs in at 132 pounds with a professional record of 39 wins, 6 defeats, 21 wins coming by way of knockout, he hails from Vancouver, British Columbia. Here is Tony Kidfire Pat. Pat. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, white trim, weighing in at 130 pounds. He is undefeated in 16 professional bouts, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Here is pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather, 10 rounds, junior lightweights. 21-year-old Floyd Mayweather and Tony Pep getting set. Let's take a look at the rules as governed by the state of New Jersey. 10-point must system, no three knockdown rule. No standing eight count. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If there's an accidental foul, they'll go to the scorecards after five rounds are completed. Prior to that, it will be a technical draw. There is five foot seven, Floyd Mayweather Jr., 16 and 0, 13 knockouts. Longest layoff of his career, 56 days. And maybe they'll be finding some big opponents for him now, and he'll have to take a little bit of time off. He's been really blitzing through opposition. Take a look at the power. Mayweather, 81% knockout ratio. He has 10 knockouts of the 13 in the first three rounds. Pep has 11 of his 21 knockouts in the first three rounds as well. Mayweather has a lot of confidence. He says, people say that I'm cocky. I'm really not. I'm just confident, and I can back it up, and I want to fight the best in the division now. That 1996 Olympic boxing team, an outstanding group so far in the professional game. Yesterday, here in Atlantic City, Eric Morrell and Zahir Rahim, both winners. Good body shot by Mayweather. Hep will need to establish that jab to keep him off. That is his major weapon in this fight. See some of the head movement by Mayweather. He's got some underrated defensive skills as far as slipping punches. I think it's safe to say that Mayweather is the whole package. And it's just seasoning at this point. 
got the speed, he's got poise. You saw the miss by Pep and a quick right hand over the top by Mayweather. Doesn't let situations get away. His father, Floyd Sr., in his corner on his son. He says that he obviously has the Mayweather speed. Tucks under the shoulder for his defense. That's what his father did when he fought in the late 70s and early 80s. Dropping down and slipping like Uncle Jeff, who was 32 and 10 as a pro. And then the jab and the hook like Roger, a former two-time world champion. And he may have the best power in the family, Floyd, on top of all those other glittering credentials. And you see a double left hand as he jumps right on Pep. Watch the head movement and then Mayweather springing into action behind it. Trying to work for his openings. Well, that's one way to take care of a reach disadvantage. Two left hooks to the body like that. Final seconds of round one, scheduled for 10. Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Tony Papp on ESPN2. Welcome back to Atlantic City. Bob Papa along with Dave Bontempo. Round number two underway. Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Tony Papp in a scheduled 10-round junior lightweight bout. There are some numbers from round one. And Mayweather with the edge and the punches landed, also with the punches thrown. And not a good percentage for Pep. And if Pep gets his jab moving, those numbers will improve for him. He does have the height and reach advantage. But Mayweather has done a very good job of negating that. Mayweather landing 50% of his power shots in the first round. And there were some crunching body shots that he got in. This really is a family affair for the Mayweather. When Floyd was three years of age, his father used to put him up on his shoulders to hit the speed bag at the Towsie Gym in Grand Rapids, Michigan. His dad, a top welterweight contender, was put in jail in Milan, Michigan in 1993 in a federal prison on drug charges. Floyd Jr. was 16 at the time. And Floyd said, I learned you either end up dead or in jail with drugs, and he's learned to stay away from that. And if you remember during the Olympics and early in his pro career, dedicated everything to his father. He said, someday I hope to put my father on my shoulders and help him out as he's helped me. Really getting some good power shots here. Mayweather turning, getting excellent leverage in. You talk about the family affair. He was on a card with Roger and Jeff last year in Grand Rapids to bring it back home before they all went their separate ways and they live in Las Vegas now. And Pet can no longer be content with trying to jab. He needs to double jab to keep Mayweather off because Mayweather has the speed. Mayweather using that left hook. And turning into his punches again, Mayweather getting maximum leverage. A guy that just oozes with confidence in the ring. See Mayweather just moving away, the spacious ring, 22 feet by 22 feet, plenty of room to roam. And then he has the speed to come on in and close that when he wants and get his big punches in. Mayweather just digging. These are high quality bombs to the body here. Final seconds of round number two. This bout controlled to this point by Floyd Mayweather. Back to Atlantic City after this brief timeout. What the is your? Get heavy. The corner of Floyd Mayweather, his dad. Well, I feel good, Daddy. Relax, then. Go on, take care of your business. This is the beat you guys. You're going to stop it. Okay. This moving, bang, bang. He know you heard the right time. Okay. Just a matter of time. And this time, this time right here, when you drop the stick, stick with that lead right hand, okay? All right. We are going to be third round. What do you think, Dave? 
a tremendous package by Mayweather, getting good advice from the yo, corner. Get that and he's controlled the bout so far. Both rounds for him. Yo, yo, wipe that ice out here, please. And now they'll wipe away some ice in the corner of Tony Pat. We begin round number three. Mayweather emerging as one of the sweet personalities that, that boxing needs in an age when uh, good matchups are very much needed in this sport. Mayweather controlling Pep in that round. Pep has only landed 10 of 58 jabs, and that's supposed to be his department. Mayweather is out jabbing the jabber, and then of course he's out gunning into the body. Well, Mayweather has that sixth sense. He can anticipate his opponent's moves, and he's able to just slide away and duck and spin and turn, and then score like that. And the subtlety is that when he slips a punch, he doesn't use a lot of the ring. Just enough to get him in punching position. And then he scores. Dave scorecard through two rounds. No surprise there. And Mayweather just has been the advertised package so far. You know, it's amazing. Here's a 21-year-old in his 17th pro fight who's making a guy in his 46th pro bout who has been in against some champions has a lot of experience, looked very confused in only two and a half rounds. He's making Pep punch down at him and miss. He's out gunning him to the body. Pep is not able to load and get into a rhythm. And these are all the things that Floyd Mayweather is doing before he punches. A steady hook of, a steady diet of hooks to the body has been a bread and butter for Mayweather here. Good hook again by Mayweather and caught Pep moving and that was a big exchange as Pep got brave and paid for it. Now Mayweather digging to the body. He continues to attack Pep. just can't buy quickness. You look at Mayweather, so many things he does instinctively that you see in fighters maybe once in a generation. I think it's safe to say we could be looking at one of boxing's dominant personalities in the next five years or so. Absolutely. Final seconds of round number three. Scheduled for ten, all Mayweather. Watch Mayweather complete a shift from defense to offense. Makes Pep miss, then lands two quick punches. Just beautiful. Round number four underway between Floyd Mayweather and Tony Pep. Bout control by the 21-year-old Mayweather to this point. 16-0 with 13 knockouts. Take a look at the distance as far as these two are concerned. Pep obviously coming in with 277 more rounds of experience. 29 more bouts, but Mayweather has brought this bout to an even plane as far as that's concerned. Mayweather way out in front with the punches landed, and if Pep is going to get Mayweather to the deep water, in this case the deep rounds, he needs to do better than this. He's getting outgunned now, and his jab is not scoring for him, and that's a great ball. Mayweather, so quick, so accurate, and so strong. And one of the things about Mayweather tonight has been how the defense has set up his offense by making Pep miss with his best shot time and again. Pep is not able to set the pace. First, Mayweather ducks the punch, then he slides in, and then attacks. Tony Pep may be facing the best boxer he has ever faced in his career. The only one you could probably say that might have been better than Mayweather at this point. Tony Lopez, he fought Lopez in Sacramento in 1988 when Lopez was in his prime. Well, this is several years later and he's got the legs of a fighter in his 30s and Mayweather many years younger and presumably fresher. So we'll see how that compares with 
the fact that Mayweather hasn't gone that long in many fights. One minute remaining in round number four. Big key, if this does get into the late rounds, Pep wants, how much did Mayweather take out of him now with his early start? Yeah, what will Pep have left? Remember, Mayweather in his last bout in April did go 10 rounds against Gustavo Cuello. No such thing as a cheap body shot for Mayweather. They're all maximum. Closing seconds of round four. Floyd Mayweather continues to pound on Tony Patton. Two, starting on Saturday, June 20th. Well, so more conventional sport boxing. And Floyd Mayweather, light years ahead of his age at age 21, Dave Bontempo, controlling Tony Papp through the first four rounds. And the important thing to consider is that he's beating a guy who showed up tonight. Tony Papp is doing what he can, but Mayweather just too much for him. Look at the jabs through four rounds. The jab is Pep's game, and Mayweather is beating. That's a big factor in this fight. Ripping right hand to the waistline by Mayweather. Then a couple of hooks up top. A second hook hurt. Pat cannot hit Mayweather. Dave Bontempo has it a shutout. And I agree with you, Dave. Reflective of Mayweather's elusiveness, his power, and just the fact he never lets a chance get away. Even the biggest Tony Pep fan would probably have a hard time disagreeing with that scorecard. Yeah, they'd have to see that he's in with a guy tonight. That's right on him. You know those legions of fans, how they're all over the place here. And you look at Pep up close, he's jabbing and missing over the top. And then Mayweather gets right inside, can now jab him, and then land power. Pep has not landed many punches in this round. And he's getting tired. These body shots by Mayweather have to be taking a big toll on him. And Pep may have to gamble. The jab is missing over the top, he may have to try a left hook to the body, then go upstairs to the head and show Mayweather something else with his left hand, if he can. Approaching one minute to go in round number five. Fast scheduled for 10 rounds. We're in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Bob Popo, along with Dave Bontempo, Al Bernstein, on assignment this weekend on the amateur team. Glad you can join us. Earlier, Lamon Brewster with a very impressive second round knockout of Louis Panaco. Right now, Floyd Mayweather just dominating Tony Peck. Cutting off the ring, waging this bout exactly where he wants, and thinking in sequence, not just firing one punch. Seems like he's always a few moves ahead. And Mayweather especially has the power to take guys out, but also the patience to work behind his jab as often as necessary. Pep has only been knocked out once, and that was back in 1988 against Tony Lopez. As round number five comes to an end. Floyd Mayweather back to his corner. And the corner of Tony Pep. Still waiting a little too much, Tony. Bring your jab down. Bring your jab down to his chest. You'll hit him every fucking time. Bring it down. In the Mark G. Arena. I got it. I know. I know that. Well, as Tony Pep regroups, we told you earlier about Lamont Brewster, and let's take a look at the action in round two, Dave. Especially if you're a big uppercut fan, end of the round here, Brewster, very patient, had been working behind his jab, giving the sense that he'll go the distance if necessary, then this explosion ends the fight. What an uppercut. 
That came with about seven seconds left in round number two. Monaco could not answer the bell. Also tonight, David Washington improved to 8-0. He came up with a win against Ron McCarthy. And this is Zamarone, a unanimous decision against Patricia Martinez. And Julio Aquino knocked out Victor Miller in round two. That to get you updated. Right now, Floyd Mayweather working on a shutout. He is 16 0 with 13 knockouts. 1996 United States Olympic bronze medalist. Has a golden pro career and look at the numbers in round five. Wow, for a guy who's a stylist to only land six punches when you're a boxer is really a credit to what Mayweather has done. You heard Pep's corner say, get that jab down. What else should Tony Pep do? Well, the jab down is one start because if he's aiming lower, then he'll get the head of Mayweather because he's going up top. I talked before about the double left hook to the body and the head. He's got to step up his pace, get off first. He's waiting on Mayweather now because Mayweather's been in on him. He has to gamble. He, at this point, has nothing to lose on the scorecard. Mayweather made him miss every punch there. And this is a guy who's been accurate throughout his career and what you do with a guy who's quick like Mayweather is try to use that quickness against him if you can fire a punch that is nowhere near the mark just to set up another one how about that right and left that blocked some of it but not all of it and then Mayweather is not right on Pep he's waiting for another opportunity now called at the top of the show across between Leonard and De La Hoya, and he's shown more Leonard in this fight as far as the, the sweet jab, the patience, and the overall savvy. You see a little bit more power? May look like Oscar. De La Hoya dominant, as expected last night in El Paso against Patrick Charpentier in front of over 45,000 in El Paso, Texas. And there was some talk that, that Mayweather and Gennaro Hernandez was premature because the style may not be right for Floyd Mayweather, but this is a guy that would fight exactly like Gennaro Hernandez, and up till now, Floyd Mayweather has handled it very well. A rare punch landed by Pep. Really not to diminish Pep either. Yeah, he showed up tonight. He really is putting forth the best effort he can, but he's getting slower as this fight progresses. A tribute to those body shots that Mayweather landed earlier. There's another hook to the body. Another man has been down. Round number six coming to its conclusion. Another very good round for Floyd Mayweather. Tony Pep to the center of the ring touches gloves with Floyd Mayweather as we start round number seven in the scheduled ten round bout. Bob Papa, Dave Bontempo from Atlantic City, New Jersey. And that graphic a mistake. It is Pep who has fought past the sixth round 27 times. And Mayweather passed the sixth round once just to get that straightened out. In fact, it was Mayweather's last bout in April, a 10-round decision against Gustavo Cuella. There's something interesting in the numbers this round is that Pep actually threw more, but uh, Mayweather landing more. And there have been many storylines in this. And one big one with the numbers is Pep only landing 19 of 136 jabs. And that was his ticket coming in here. Mayweather has taken that away with good head movement. Take it down and then break it off. Mayweather continuing to show angles, slip any punches from Pep. Pep is getting Mayweather into the later rounds. But Dave, does he have much to do anything with it? Well, we talked earlier about how much would Mayweather take out of him early. He took a lot out. There could be a little bit of a surge here by Pep over what he's been doing earlier, but he's far behind and he'll have to stop Mayweather. That's not the likely scenario you would have pictured coming in. Mayweather.
Mayweather with a steady diet of hooks to the body in the first three rounds of this bout, taking some of the steam out of Pat. And then just another example there of that jab by Mayweather inside the jabber. Perfect execution. <laughs> Well, if you throw away the scorecards, Pep has Mayweather where he wants. This is his opportunity, but he needs to step it up in a big way to make anything interesting occur here. Final half minute of round seven. Floyd Mayweather just dominating Tony Pep here on a Sunday night in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Cap off a very busy weekend in the world of boxing. In this very ring on Saturday, Freddie Norwood kept his title against Gennaro Rios, stopping him. Take it to the corner of Tony Pat. Fortunately, it's Cable. <laughs> Well, Tony Pep a bit more eloquent than those last comments. And Tony, a veteran, wondering what makes a talented fighter as a veteran. There are a lot of ingredients that make up a good fighter. You know, you may be a good puncher, but you might not have a good chin. Um, you may not have heart. You may not have uh, the ability to recover from a knockdown. So there are so many ingredients that do make up a good fighter. That's why when you hear some guys say, gee, I don't know why this guy quit or why he didn't have, why he couldn't do it because he had all these abilities, but it takes a lot more than um, obvious observations. What you see on the outside, there's stuff inside, like I said, heart, dedication, and the love of the sport. Well, Tony Papp talking about what makes a boxer tick, especially in the later rounds when you're a veteran, but uh, I think his comments at the end of round number seven about not being able to hit Mayweather with most apropos, and look at those numbers, 133 more landing. And they've thrown about the same number, and he said, I cannot hit this guy. And that's a testament. We've been talking about the absence of the jab landing for Pep in this fight, and that really has haunted him. You know, you don't land your jab, you don't drive the guy back, you can't set up anything else. And uh, believe it or not, a little frustration might set in now and then. I think that last bout, Mayweather hooks again to the body. The fact that he went to 10 rounds against Cuello did not knock him out probably will serve him in this bout. There is not that frustration factor. Sometimes you, know, you just have to settle for what your opponent will bring to you. And I think the last bout, Bob, set up this test right here. Okay, you've been the distance now. Let's put you in with a stylist, a crafty guy. And Pep has shown a style that you can see where it succeeds if he wasn't fighting Mayweather. That was a perfect example right there of Pep's comment of not being able to hit this little guy. He tried every angle and Mayweather just dipped away. Too small, you can't jab under him. Too fast, you can't jab around him. He has no answer to Floyd Mayweather and uh, he's joining the club. So do you think Mayweather is ready for that next step? I really do. I believe that this is a favorable stylistic matchup for him should he fight Gennaro Hernandez, who fights just like this. And of course, he's crafty. He has a little bit more tricks. It's a step up that way. But uh, Mayweather technically is uh, waging a very sound fight here. The one difference is that Gennaro Hernandez double jabs more than we're seeing here from Pep. Break, 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 break. Hey, when I say break, break, all right? You know, Brown letting Tony Pep know the rules. It's been a clean fight. Now the man has been down. Mayweather has utterly dominated Tony Pep. Watch out, watch out. The uppercut would seem to be a good weapon for Pep, but he's getting peppered too much. Don't hold him, don't hold him, let him go. 
<laughs> Mayweather just continues to attack Pep. Closing seconds of round number eight. Scheduled for 10, all Mayweather. Veteran Tony Pep and Floyd Mayweather begin round number nine in the scheduled 10 round junior lightweight bout. Bob Papa along with Dave Bontempo in another dominant round for Mayweather. Phenomenal numbers as far as Pep only landing three punches in the round, six the round before that. This is a guy who's a good boxer having it taken away. A good boxer who has given a good effort tonight but just cannot hit Floyd Mayweather. Cannot hit, but you cannot catch. And one of the things that Mayweather's people would be looking at here is making sure that after he dominated early, he's not getting lazy here and getting hit needlessly in a fight in which they know he's already won. He's getting better defensively as this fight goes along. I want to know on CompuBox tonight if it's Saul Avila or... Joe Carnicelli that has been keeping track of Tony Pep's landed because they have had a night off. That's Saul. Saul Avilar. And you get a good example why that's happening is Pep has been too high, too wide and did not able to throw a second jab, which is important. Sometimes the first jab won't land, but the second one will. And Pep hasn't had that second jab. He's also taken a murderous attack to the body. Oh, he's still punching as he doubles up with his left Break. hand. Break. On a night in which a great champion like Michael Jordan may be departing from the sports scene, we could be looking at a future champion, albeit a different sport, Floyd Mayweather, well on his way to his 17th pro victory. Barring a disaster here against Tony Papp. This has been an impressive performance by Mayweather in a test that he has to pass brilliantly in the minds of his people if they're going to take another step up with him and he wants the best right now we'll stay here in between rounds and take you to the corner of floyd mayweather and find out if there's any frustration from the 21 year old from grand rapids michigan about not being able to take out tony pap we'll listen to the dialogue between floyd and his father, Floyd Sr. But he has clearly dominated Tony Papp now through nine rounds of the scheduled 10 rounder. There's the bell. That's the end of round nine. Yeah, this is your last round, right? Uh-huh. Last round, touch gloves and center ring. Okay. Whatever you need. Okay. This is what I want you to do, look. Your last round, stay downstairs, but look. Stay downstairs, but move your head. I don't want you to get caught in nothing, okay? Okay. Stay downstairs, talk around. All right? Uh-huh. Keep your head moving. Keep your head moving. I want you to get cut, okay? Yep. Downstairs, round the side, up the middle. Okay. Seconds, All right, let's go. Seconds, Uncle Jeff leaning against the rope. And Father Floyd. What about that advice? A good advice, and also it illustrates the total lack of danger they feel. Sometimes guys say, hey, you know, don't get caught because you've got this big lead. Their biggest concern is that he'll get cut, and it will keep him out of action. Take a look at the jab numbers through nine rounds. And to me... This is the biggest story in the fight because Pep came in and is an excellent jabber and Mayweather has utterly taken it away from him by a ratio of almost 4 to 1. And obviously the Mayweather clan looking down the road. Fearful of cuts, obviously. That would delay any future fights. Mayweather tonight got on top by being a slugger 
but he stayed there by being a boxer. Second half of the fight, we've seen better defense from Mayweather, more jabs. He's not taking many chances, and he has been the boxer in the last five rounds here. Pep says, come on. So this will be the second straight bout that Mayweather has fought into the 10th round. Obviously, if he steps up to that next level, it will be 12-round championship fight. My question to you, Dave, is do you go right for one of the major titles, or maybe you try to get him 12 rounds with one of the lesser titles? Well, they could go the 12 round for one of the, quote, continental titles, but you might as well go for something that is worthy. Go for some type of a world title, because that is the mindset of your fighter also. He doesn't want to get any type of a belt to put him in the top 10 of an organization. He wants the title. That's where his mind is. I go with that. I'd rather staying down below. Kept saying, I'm in shape. Go ahead. Dig away at my body. That's all fine and good. If you're not keeping score, right? <laughs> well, Pep has tried different things. He's seen a lot coming at him tonight by Mayweather. Jab didn't work. He never got his uppercut moving against Mayweather. And he's showing frustration as Mayweather protects the ring a little more than in other rounds. But you see the movement by Mayweather. Well, it's not Mayweather's job to get into a slugfest as Pep looks to rip off the left hand. Now, where was this all night? Now, Mayweather answers right back. Mayweather blocked most of it. And if you're wondering, well, how come Mayweather hasn't taken him out? Remember, Pep only knocked out once back in 1988 against Tony Lopez. And he took good shots in this fight, but was able to stay with it. Cool. Well, Pep should have tried to make this a brawl maybe a little earlier. Don't know if it would have done any good. Looks like Floyd Mayweather has picked up his 17th consecutive victory as he dances with Tony Pep through 12 rounds. Back to Atlantic City with the decision after this timeout on the Deuce. This is what Pep needed throughout the entire second half of the fight. Only gets a little bit of a sample of it in the 10th round, and it's far too little, far too late for Tony Pep. Let's take a look at some final punch numbers. Tony Pep and Floyd Mayweather, and look at that. You know, they were the very incredible numbers, very good numbers there for Mayweather. Dominant, 14%. He's a power puncher, and he keeps a boxer under 15% landing. <laughs> All right, for the decision, here's Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the scoring by the three judges at ringside. Judge George Hill scores it 99 91 and judges Calvin Claxton and Kason Cheeks both score it 190 to the winner and still undefeated pretty boy Floyd Mayweather Mayweather no great shock Floyd Mayweather now 17 and 0 unanimous decision against Tony Pep we'll hear from pretty boy Floyd when we return to Atlantic City after this timeout on ESPN 2 welcome back to Atlantic City Bob Popo along with Dave Von Temple Floyd Mayweather unanimous impressive decision against Tony Pep spanning 10 rounds and pretty boy Floyd is standing by with Dave Dave okay thank you boy Floyd uh, you basically you have preserved now an October 3rd meeting with Janeiro Hernandez against a style that was similar. You happy with how you handled it? First of all, I want to thank God for giving me this victory and I also want to thank my Uncle Jeff mm. and my Daddy Floyd Mayweather and all my fans back in Las Vegas, Nevada and Grand Rapids, Michigan. What was the key to making a guy that's a good boxer miss you so much? Um, the main thing, I watched um, Tony Pett videos and the main thing I wanted to do was take his jab away and establish my jab and my combinations and get the victory the best way I know how. Your body shots established the tempo for you early on, and then it looked like you were able to box after that. He's a tall guy. You know, I want to take his jab away and take his legs away because I knew he was going to run because he know I can come to a guy, but he know I can box. So tonight I'll show everybody that I can box. Now, you've wanted the best of the division. You're going to get it. Your thoughts on all that now? 
I just want to thank Ty Rank, Bob Aaron, and Ty DeBuff, you know, for giving me this opportunity to fight for the world title um, October 30 against Janeiro Hernandez. Um, a lot of guys out there want to say uh, that I don't deserve a title, but um, I'm not ducking and dodging nobody at the 130 pound weight class. I'm willing to fight everybody and all comers. You think that fight might look like this one? Um, I just feel I'm going to get a victory. I can't predict which way and how I'm going to do it, but I can feel, I do feel that I'm going to get a victory against Janeiro Hernandez. But I feel it's going to be a good, tough fight. He's a very tough guy and a gained opponent. Okay, Floyd, thank you. Congratulations on a very big victory for you tonight. Let's take it back to Bob. All right.